So, what it takes to be elite. I feel like there's um the work ethic has to be there. That's in my opinion the work ethic is one of the main things, but anybody can just work hard. So, you have to have there's a there's a certain level of talent you have to have as well. Mhm. And then um, on top of that, you have to have a support system because if you don't have the support system, it's tough. Mm -hmm. And then also the last thing I feel like that you have to have is just um, a, a self a self accountability. Mm -hmm. And a lot That's of a, a lot of players a lot of players lack that. They lack the self they lack the self accountability of going to school, getting their grades, doing the right things in class, doing the right things in general, not posting foolishness on social media. Um, the the, the self-accountability part is huge mm -hmm. as an elite athlete. Like, are you, um, when you have time, are you playing video games? I don't feel like Eva's playing video games. I feel like when she has time, she's in the basement dribbling the ball. Yeah, like the other day, she was, she was working on her ball handling the day on vacation. I'm gonna, right, add, exactly, I'm gonna exactly. add some clips. I'm gonna add some clips of her. She's on right, the right. Exactly. So you have she was like working out the other day. Yeah. Right. I saw you that the that. other day. Yeah. You have stuff like st stuff like that where she's like she already has an elite mentality because regular kid stuff doesn't excite her. Basketball does. Like the sport does. So that's what you when you when it's when it's elite, it's like you're not looking to do anything else. You you really kind of take away from certain parts of your childhood because you know where you want to go and what's what what you want to accomplish with the sport. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for parents, what do you think is like the mo like the easiest way to identify? Is it is it the passion? Is it the skill? Is it um, just the hard work? You know, I, I, kids can work hard, but, you know, maybe you know, I was a great saxophone player, but I didn't play saxophone <laughs> past high school. You know what I mean? So right. stuff like that. Um, what are some of the easier identifiers for parents to say, hey, I think this might be, you know, what my child could be good at? It's the, you have to see for the parents, how they stack up against their peers at that age. Mm -hmm. um, and then are they doing enough on their own? Because realistically, your parents could want it for you all they want. Like Mark could want it for Markai all he wants. At the end of the day, if Markai don't want yeah. it, he's not going to get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he has to understand that like there's a level of you need you wanting it yourself. And once you want it yourself, you'll show that you want it yourself by your action. Then it's not just necessarily going to the gym every day. Mm -hmm. It's the little things that you do that that'll show that whether you want it or not. Right? Like. It's almost like every action is dictated by your end goal, which is making it as a successful basketball player. Mm -hmm. So when I see guys like going out and getting in trouble or not going to class, it's like, well, what is your, what, like, what do you really want? Do you really want this or not? Yeah, it seems like elite is the bare minimum. Um, so why do elite players need elite training? Why won't just, you know, um, the driveway, the high, you know, a single, you know, one season type coach do? Because at the end of the day, elite, uh, you need to be around. It, I, I feel like greatness breeds greatness. Mm -hmm. So you can't have somebody mediocre, somebody that if a kid says, hey, it's 5 a.m. and I want to go to the gym and I want to work out. And they're going to be like, nah, it's too early. I don't want to wake up. Um, let's go at 6 p.m. Right. Whereas the kid could have worked out in the morning and then maybe he had something homework wise he needs to do later on. So that was the only time. So the trainer has to be up for the grind, too. He has to be an elite, elite in what he does, because he has to understand that it's, it's not necessarily going to be on his time. It's going to be on the athlete's time. And you got to bring your best at those times. Like there's times when I wake up at four or five a.m. and I and I know that I got stuff that I got to do throughout the day, so I go to the gym first. Like it's an it's a mentality. Even as um, as a player, that's how I was. Mm -hmm. I would get up and do my stuff early, so I get it out of the way in the day, and then I know if I finish my homework, I can work out again. That's two workouts. Whereas somebody else that wasn't elite, they were waking up late, going to school, then they got one workout in. And as Kobe says, 
he would do that where he would work out three three times in a day. Work wake up at four a.m. Mm-hmm. Work out three times a day, and by the time he's two weeks in or a month in, he's done three times the amount of workouts a regular person's done. Mm-hmm. So you need an elite, an, an elite and kind of extreme mentality to kind of be like, this is what we're doing. Like when guys say said, let's get up and do 7 a.m. workout. I'm like, all right, I'm with it. I'm going to go to bed early tonight. Like it is what it is. And I want you to, this is for the people. Cause I think I know the answer to this, but do you need, does the talent need to be there immediately to be elite? You know? Seems like you, no. seems like the talent can come, the skill can come, you know, if if the other things are in place, the, the discipline, the um, the self awareness and the self accountability. Would you agree or disagree with that? I agree. I I I don't think the talent needs to be there right away. Mm-hmm. I feel like it, you can work on on those things through just through hard work and like look at a guy like um, Steph Curry. Look at a guy like like he wasn't amazing in high school he was he was a good player no but he wasn't amazing in high school um cj Mm mccullum damn near nobody went to lehigh mid-major worked on his game now he's one of the best players in my opinion best two guards in the league right um there's so many guys that you could say that that blossomed late that you would not say probably when they were 12 13 14 that this is going to be a superstar in the nba right so it 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 all depends on how you um continue to build your craft and then your talent might eventually shine through like later like you might hit you might be good and then you might be six one and then you hit a growth spurt like anthony davis all of a sudden you're six ten and it's like shit he's look at him now right 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 i feel like that narrative is being uh shown more a little bit more than when like back you know 10 15 20 years ago mark when people weren't when the when when the um when people weren't coming like i'm sorry when the one and done wasn't a thing and people were coming out of high school that right. um you know the development i don't know was it spoken about back then that if they didn't perform like a meet like draft busts you know yeah. than that you know like that three-year window that you kind of have to to blossom um, or prove yourself in order to get that contract. But I feel like guys now are a little bit more aware in, in which they aren't scared to take a post-grad year. They aren't scared to register because they know that, hey, I might be bigger, better, and stronger next year. No. I think it's more current now than anything. Yeah. Because uh, back, back in the day, it was more the rules were different. It was a little bit more strict. Um, you didn't have as many um, guys saying that they wanted to go pro right out of high school. It was maybe like one or two. You know, now every kid, you know, want to go pro out of high school. Now they got right. the G League. You got overseas now. You had a couple of guys like Jennings um, go overseas and then come back to the league. So, you know, it's just, it just I think today it's just more options. Um, I think overseas is better than it used to be back in the day. Now they're more. They're getting it more when you get there. You're, you're, they're making it more like, like more like your home instead of it just okay. You just come play ball, go home. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's the difference. And back in the day, you know, you you expected to go four years of college. You know, Michael Jordan, a lot of these cats. I know Mike didn't go all four years, but at least he did three. Yeah. You know, he was just he just got so good the third year that they were like, look, you just, you just need to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most of the guys, you know, Charles Barkley, you know. Some of those guys, man, they went four years. I mean, that's where they got most of their development. Uh, I think that is a big downfall to a lot of players. They go too early. Mm-hmm. I remember a big, they had a big kid on the LSU last year. He did one and done. I felt like he should have stayed in at LSU for a couple of more years to get more development. Uh, but, you oh, know, it, it's – Was it huh? Emmett? Who was it? I forget. It's a big kid that, that when he was in the uh, McDonald's All American game, he went to and LSU. Williams? I forget his name. I know it was like a really big kid. Oh, oh, Nas Reed. Nas Reed. Nas Reed. Nas Reed. Yeah. I think that's him. Yeah. yeah. He went, did one year, and I, I thought he had like a mediocre year in college, but he got drafted to Minnesota, I think. Yep, yep. That's I him. Think, uh, see, yeah. I felt like you haven't heard from him. 
See, I felt like he should he he's somebody that should have stayed, he should have gotten more to stay at least two more years to get development. Very, very he talented. Player. A top draft pick, like a really top draft pick that's playing. So, you know, it, it's pros and cons of that, but I just feel like um, you know, you you ready, you ready. And um it's, it's just a decision that you have to make um at the right time. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel like the NBA is on a youth movement though, so it's yeah. hard to really gauge that. It's like yeah, I could go now where I potentially get picked anywhere, and at least I got three years of, of paid internship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, to an yeah. extent. Like, I got three years of paid uh, – I'm paying – I'm getting paid to be taught on the job, being taught yeah. on the fly, yeah. versus staying in college, and then you never really know what happens. Maybe you tweak your ankle, or maybe something happens, That's and it. then it's never a thing, right? That's so, it. I don't really – it just – it really depends on the situation. There's some yeah. guys that – you know what? If you go back, you're gonna go back and probably get drafted in another year. But then some guys don't. Some yeah. guys think, well, this is my window of opportunity. What if the coach recruits a guy, plays the same position? He's also a McDonald's All American, kind of like in Kentucky, where it's like you kind of force guys out to an extent. Yeah. Where it's like they're they're getting All Americans every year, great freshmen coming in every year, and it's like, well, am I gonna stay and kind of fight for minutes, or am I gonna? Try to get paid the internship. You know what I'm saying? So, you can always come back and get an education. That's the thing. Right. You have online schools now. Back then, you didn't have that. Technology is so so broad now for for, for students, mm-hmm. man. That, that mm-hmm. they, that's how they look at it. I can always go back and get my degree. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't even have to go back to the school. I can do it online yeah. some kind of way. So, yeah. So, I guess from your experience, Cedric, what are some of the? And I'm looking for like specific things that you know your athletes do what are um some of the most impressive elite habits uh that you've seen you know come through your gym elite habits you know like Um, you know someone who was vegan at the age of 14 something like that you know (laughs) (laughs) um i don't have any 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 young vegans i don't believe in my gym um (laughs) But what we do have is just a certain level of intensity that's brought. Um, I feel like we try to obviously go as game-like as possible through all the drills. We try to go game speed. We try to keep the intensity up. I think people kind of know me as a yeller. So I'm not letting people get away with nothing in my gym. I'm going to have my big boy voice. And I'm going to make sure that everybody's going at the speed that they should be going at. Um, but then we've also kind of built like a, uh, like a culture of, of just holding everybody accountable. So, um, th- those are like, like holding people accountable. Like some people don't feel comfortable with it, but I feel like if you create an environment where everybody's doing that, then nobody wants to stop. Nobody wants to slack off. Nobody wants to sh- cut short on a rep because you know, your peers are looking and they're like, well, I'm doing this full speed. You should be doing it full speed. Coach is watching. Like yeah. stuff like that. So that's the, that's the um, that's kind of where our our uh, our standards are. We try to keep all of our athletes to the same standard, whether it's Elijah Fisher, number one in the, in the world at his uh, at his age group, or whether it's the nine year old kid that just came through for the first time. We try to obviously we temper it. Obviously, that kid's not going to be at the same level, but I will try to keep the same level of focus for everybody. Congratulations for you know saying your kids are on that page I know that's that's some that is elite that's a very elite community a very elite way that you know co- coaches in college run their program um and uh yeah the earlier the you instill that uh that environment the better 